think. Oh my god. <laughs> Just the top bit, he says. Oh yeah, I got oh I gotta do the outside by there as well, I forgot about that. I've actually seen Dave's body. He's just an ethereal ghost. Once I've done this bit on the outside, it shouldn't be too hard on the inside. This bit's just gonna be a bit slow because I gotta stop, jump off, move the scaffolding, put them back up again, go back up. Yeah, I should be able. I need to be able to like like Mario Sunshine. I need to be able to like power around, fly around in the sky with my power node. Take off. Been the other world for the first time. Oh, nice. Yeah, watching anyone play out of world for the first time is always really good. Okay, that is that bit cleaned nice and good. Yeah, I have to do the outside as well. Jumps off. Power washes himself in the sky. Power washes, he falls. Blasts himself up. Blasts as he goes down. Would you say it's wild? <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't say that. I would never say that. And don't put words in my mouth, how dare you. What is Outer Wilds? Um, Outer Wilds is a game where you are a... You exist on this planet. You start off on this planet and you're going to go... You're going to go explore, basically, the... Um, spa the, the planets around you. And then... Uh, this, this isn't a spoiler, because this is literally, like... This is the setup for the game, essentially. And... Um, what happens is you you're exploring and if you as you're playing you'll notice the sun's getting bigger and then what happens is the sun explodes it goes it goes super and it goes blue dwarf and it explodes and then as it as, and then it takes out the whole like area and then as it hits you everything goes crazy and then you go back in time and you wake up exactly where um 
you were before. And you're sp and, and then the whole game is basically is you're stuck in this time loop of the sun exploding and destroying everything. And it goes and it very suddenly explodes. It's like it just out of nowhere just explodes basically. Like it's like not a natural thing. And so you're basic the game is basically you trying to you're stuck in like this time loop and you're trying to work out like what's going on essentially. I'm trying to solve the mystery of how like how 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 to like what's happening and if you can stop it and that's the that's the that's the basic thing of the game is you're trying to stop I don't I don't even know if you're trying to stop the sun exploding but you're just trying you're just like trying to work out what's going on essentially and it's great because like you can actually like the general thing is if you know what you're doing you could do the whole thing in one time loop because that's what you have to do by the end is once you've every time you play it you're gonna you're gonna be going some you're gonna you're gonna you pick where you want to go you're like okay I'll go here this time or maybe you'll discover something on this other planet you go somewhere else and you can discover discover something on another planet so eventually you'll be able to piece it all together so that on one of the loops that you will just do it all in one loop and so if you know what you're doing. You could do it all in one loop straight away, but you're never going to do that off the bat unless you're using the guide, which would defeat the whole purpose of playing the fucking game. So I'd say it's really cool. Combined with the fact that it's like you're going around space and you're exploring these planets, and the planets themselves are fucking awesome. Um, where, like, the, the actual planets are just, are all really unique and cool. Like, there's one planet where it's two planets that orbit each other, and one has sand, they, they pass, like, the sand from one planet to the other planet over the course of the loop. And the other one's this big ocean planet that has these giant, like, tornadoes of water going around that, like, grab the pieces of, like, the planet and, like, blast them up into space, and then they come back down. It's fucking awesome. There's one. There's there's another planet where the center of it is like a black hole, and the planet's slowly slowly falling inside of it, and it's all getting shot out somewhere else in the that galaxy in out of a white hole. So like over the period of the time thing, the planet moves from this black hole into pieces floating around in space in a white. It's, oh, it's so good. It's it's just fucking amazing. And it's very atmospheric. And watching the sun explode for the first time is, like, amazing. You're just sitting there just like, whoa. You just sit, whoa, this big fucking supernova coming out. It's, it's visually really cool as well. And then the planet of the... Uh, What's this game called? Outer Wild. Outer Wilds. Not Outer Worlds. Outer Wilds. Definitely check it out. It is. I could not recommend it more to anyone. It's just so good. I've not seen anyone say they haven't enjoyed it when they've played it. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just such an experience. Yeah, and then there's the one, the Fawn Planet, which is full of like the fucking uh, giant. Fucking lantern fish things. And, yeah. Just, oh, so good. I'll stop talking about it now. You gotta go buy it. You gotta buy it now. I think at first it can be quite intimidating because there's so much explorable space, but as long as you kind of, like, break it up, you know? Like, okay. On this loop, I'm gonna go here. On this loop, I'm gonna go here. On this loop, I'm gonna go here. There's no indication what to do next. That's part of the reason. That's part of what I love. And the game does actually kind of guide you. 
Like, the, the whole thing is that you... Yeah, the, the whole thing of the game is that you don't get told where to go next. You are, like... You go... You, you're there, and you're like, okay, there's this whole thing, and you go to a place, and you, like... You'll wander around, and maybe you'll find nothing that time, and you'll go there another time, and you'll... You'll find the thing you need, and you're like, oh... Like... But, yeah, usually what happens in the game is you find something, and it will tend to point you towards something else somehow. Like, I did it all without any help. No one, no one when I was playing it was like, tell me what to do. In fact, most people when I was playing it didn't even know what the game was. They were like, whoa, what is this? We're all like, in the mystery together, you know? I can, I can happily be like, yeah, I played that uh, pretty early, you know? I played that pretty much right after it came out on the Epic Game Store, I think. On, Steam, on stream. It's so good. If you ever if you play it and then want to watch me play it, uh, it is saved on YouTube. The Outer Wilds play for it. But I wouldn't watch me do it until you've done it. Yeah, yes, that's it. Yeah, there's a panel in the ship where you piece out all the info you've gathered. That's it, yeah. I'm very passionate about that game. It's, it's very good. If I can influence anyone, it's to buy that and play it. It's just unfortunate it came out around the same time Outer Worlds did, as, and it. And it, I feel like the two. I feel like Outer Worlds was the bigger of the two in terms of like marketing and budget. And I feel like it kind of people think you're just saying Outer Worlds wrong or something like that. Or they'll just be like, oh, I think, I think they called it Outer Worlds, something like that. And you'll find that in, yeah. Very, very good. Yeah, I love the idea of a stuck in a time loop as a game idea. Yeah, it was really cool, Mojuro's Mask, being stuck in the same day, the couple day loops. I think the time loop for this is a couple, um, I can't remember what the loop, how long the, it lasted until the thing's been. Uh, I can't remember how long the loop was, actually. Was it 20 minutes? No, I think it was a bit longer than 20 minutes. I actually know, I don't know, it might have been. It was long enough that you could get stuff done, but not too long that it got boring, you know? Twenty-two, twenty-five, yeah, something like that. Although the end of the game was fucking... I won't go. I won't go more into that or anything. Twenty-two minutes. Okay, yeah. So twenty. You're stuck in a twenty-two minute time loop. There we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like that about Majora's Mask as well. Majora's Mask was great in the sense that like it was it was like three days, wasn't it? And you'd like every day. I love the fact that like they all had their own routine, and you know, over time you'd learn where someone was going to be at this time of that day, and then you'd use that to kind of solve puzzles and stuff. But yeah, I think I think if you love that aspect of Majora's Mask, you would probably love that aspect of Outer Worlds. Yeah, well, the gameplay is very different. There's like no combat in um, Outer Wilds. It's like an exploration game, you know. The joy of that game comes from uh, putting together the mystery and stuff. There was so much dirt I could have cleaned then. How dare you rob me of that game. Yeah, what are there any are there any more games that are kinda like that? I mean I guess there's Death Loop, but that's different. That doesn't that seem that does not seem like a mystery thing. That seems more like an action based thing where you have to kill someone before they kill you, basically. De Death Loop seems more like action based and not quite a. It seems more like you you die and then you get 
stuck in a loop. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Speaking of Deathloop, which was also in that PlayStation Direct, they showed they showed Sifu, which is looking pretty cool. Which reminds me of the mechanic from uh, the other game we played. Um, what was it called? The Before the Ashes game? You know the one where you die and every time you die you age up? I can't remember what that was called now, that game where we, every time we died, you got a bit older. Sifu seems like a kung fu version of that, basically. Kronos! That was it. Kronos Before the Ashes. Now, Remnant from the Ashes is the sequel. Kronos Before the Ashes is the prequel to it. This is quite a different game. Mind-boggling. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you, I generally don't remember. I just remember how it ended and being like, what the fuck is happening? I don't super duper remember. Oh, no, I remember what, oh, no, I do remember the thing. Sorry, yeah, I won't, I won't say why, but yeah, I, I do remember what was it actually. Um, yeah, it involves, it does involve some really cool stuff, though. There definitely is some, um, dimensional things and whatnot. Yes, no, I remember, I remember, I remember now the end, yeah. I can't really say, say too much, to be honest. There's another time again called 12 minutes. Really? I guess there's that game One Minute Hero or Five Minute Hero. Twelve. Mi oh, this game! Yeah, 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 yeah. We saw trailers for that, the 12 minute thing. Yeah, it's got um, James McAvoy and um, Daisy Ridley in it, and William Dafoe. Hell of a voice cast. The bit I'm most impressed by in that is William Dafoe, which <laughs> is great. William Dafoe. All right, okay, so I think that is the most... That is the most stuff, most of it done now, which is great. Greaty, greaty, great. Happy days. Half, half minute hero, that's the one, yeah.
Maybe we can speed things along a bit. Yeah, I played Braid. That was good. Braid's, Braid's a classic, uh, classic old indie game. I've always wanted another game that kind of had that. I think I think that's why I liked Outer Wilds, is it kind of had that Majora's Mask feel that I'd been looking for for a while. Like, I, I, I always love the idea of having this, like, fully realized, functioning town in Majora's Mask. Everyone has their own kind of things and, and stuff like that. And you, I, I always liked that. Yeah, I feel I feel like Braid was like a massive push for like oh no, indie games are like indie games are really good. That and um that and uh like Super Meat Boy were like massive like influences in like getting indie games into like more of the spotlight and stuff like that. Like through um, Xbox Arcade and stuff like that, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, I guess Fez is in there too, yeah. Fez is a massive ending game. It's an unfortunate ending, really, but, you know. Not the game itself, I, I mean, like, you know, the story of Fez and its creator and uh, his, yeah, his ways. <laughs> Phil, Phil Glass. Was his name Phil Glass? Or something like that. Phil Fish, that's it, not Phil Glass. Mr. Glass, they call me Mr. Glass. Although he did have a glass ego. The scent is very much like that of a muskrat, and they seem to crouch right down when marking their territory to appear much smaller than they really are. I don't know, Llama. That man is a massive fucking troll. I don't know if I'd believe him, to be honest. That dude is like a real life fucking troll. Phil Glass just he kind of just talks shit about everything. He just he Phil Glass was a very opinionated man and was not afraid of putting that opinion out there, often to his detriment, <laughs> and had a very very fragile. Uh, ego. Like, very fragile. Oh my god. He'd regularly just freak out on people for, like, saying something that, like, they didn't like, they didn't like fairs or something like that. And... Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, that was a, that was a big thing with indie games as well. Indie, indie games, the movie. That was a pretty massive thing for indie games, too. I remember he said something about Japanese developers, and then people were like, what the fuck? I think he just didn't. He did, I think he just didn't like the way Japanese developers made games or something like that. I think I can't remember what he said. I 
I think there's something like Japanese developers like game developers like stuck or something like that and they don't know how to they don't have much creativity I, I generally can't remember I know it rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way he just kind of rubbed people the wrong way a lot and he was not very nice to people <laughs> a lot of the time he would regularly go on these insane twitter rants and stuff and then he was going to make Fez 2 and then he just in like a fit of rage, he just cancelled Fez 2 and... Yeah, e egomaniac is a, is a good word for it, yes. Egomaniac, definitely. It's, it's worth looking up the whole... Phil Fish Saga. It's very interesting. It was very, it was like, it was weird. It was like at a time when indie games were like trying to find the spotlight rather than like, you know, help everyone raise everyone up. He just kind of shat people down basically. And yeah, it was. Like other indies, he's like, ah, it's fucking shit. And it just didn't seem like a particularly pleasant person. I don't think the gaming industry is much, is uh, is particularly worse off for having him left. You know. I remember reading up about a lot of that stuff because I found it very interesting. I was like, oh. you know, people, people like that are always quite interesting. These, these auteurs, I guess, is the way, the way to describe it. You know, people who like they, they take their craft very seriously. They think a lot of themselves. They, you know, it's going to be perfect. Very in that during that like indie game the movie thing he is very dramatic as well like oh my god you can see he's not a particularly stable person he's like he gets he gets pretty fucking dark during that. from below. I think he's in that as well, but they don't focus on him as much. I think they focus on Super Meat Boy, Fez, and I think Braid, but I'm not sure if they do focus on Braid. I might be making that up. Might be a different game they focus on. John from below. He, um, he streams on Twitch. He does uh, game dev stuff on Twitch. I'm pretty sure it's John from Blow, doesn't it? It is, it is Braid, it's the one, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Super Mario, Super Meat Boy. Braid and, uh, yeah. Braid. Worth a watch, though, I'd say. 
Definitely. You've never seen it. Another influence recommendation by me. Consider yourselves influenced. You've been hit by, you've been struck by a cool influence. Did it dun dun, did it dun dun, did it dun dun. Ding, baby, ding. Enjoyed it seeing it. Yeah, yeah. It's really, it's really, like, that's one of the most interesting things about documentaries for game development is, like, seeing the mindset behind why they did certain stuff. That's why I really like the, the No Clip channel on YouTube, the one that Danny O'Dwyer does. Pretty really interesting seeing the behind the scenes of games you've really enjoyed or how things came about. Daniel Dwyer is very entertaining. He's, very, he's a very funny guy. He used to be on GameSpot, didn't he? He used to do GameSpot stuff. Giant Bomb. That was, that, that was the other one. I was like, I think there was another one. Influenza in a good way. <laughs> Please don't call the police for me because I influenza you. What's, yeah, what is going on with Giant Bomb? I, I, heard, I remember seeing something about that, but I, I don't really follow it or anything like that, so I don't really know what's going on. What does that smell? Jazz, you clean in the oven? Oh, that's what the smell is, okay. I can smell the oven cleaner, yeah. Smell something that smelled a lot like oven cleaner, so I was just checking for this jazz. <laughs> it's a very handy thing about this house is you can just shout, and it's more than likely the other person will hear you. It's quite small, so. Also, how in the handy having that, like having the the corridor upstairs open and to the downstairs because there's just the open bit in the stairs. So you carry the sound carries around. Yeah, it's 
This is taking me much longer than I expected, I'll be honest. This might be the longest wash I've ever done. I'd be interested when I cut this up if this is as long as the fireman wash. An endurance wash, yeah. But it's just so fun to do. It's just so fun, yeah. Coming, coming in now and then, doing a, bit, doing a couple washes, and then, you know, a while later we'll get some new wash stuff. This is a, this is a lot more finicky. That's one of this definitely why this has taken so long. Is it's a, there's a lot more there's a lot of finicky little bits to it that take a lot of time to wash. Dings going off. Oh my god. This is freaking Ding City, baby. Ding, 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 ding. Is there anything more satisfying than the ding of a well finished? Roofing. If there is, I don't want to know about it. I told you I don't want to know about it. I don't want to know. Fascia. Cleaning the fascia. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good clean right there. Fascia was a thing, and it was a word I didn't even know what the fuck it meant until I moved into this house, and I was like, ah. And suddenly you start becoming aware of all the different parts of a house that you never cared about before. This is this 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 is the facial. I think this no, that's trim. Yeah, this kind of thing would be a facial. Like the little overhang over the roof. <laughs> it's, it's like a like, specific. It's like I, I was just like, does that need its own word? <laughs> I guess so.
guess fish is gonna be its own thing now. God, we're so close. People who build fascia, fascists, fascists, you damn fascists. Side of the house. <laughs> okay, that is the bottom bit all done there. All right. Does this need to be washed as well? Okay, hang on, we got this bit. Oh, I didn't see this bit. Gotta do the legs. Behind needs a tree, it's like a stealth power. Never hear me power washing. It's been my favorite thing to wash. Ooh. I don't know what's been my favorite thing to wash. I really enjoyed washing the house. That was very fun. Washing the fire station was quite fun. Washing the the exercise tower thing in the fire station was not fun. Well, I guess it was fun, but it was also very intimidating. I was like, oh God, there's so much to wash here. I mean, I've enjoyed washing everything, you know. I'm just having a good Power wash time. Good, clean, good, clean Christian fun, you know? bits here.
So as you can see, there is still dirt to be dirt. Oh, shit. There's still dirt to be washed around by here. God, these eaves. There's so many. <laughs> what is left to wash on the eaves? So close. Man, it's so close. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> All right, roof trim. Probably on top, I imagine. Does feel very oh man yeah this this, this roof trim is gonna just bing, bing 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 cleaning the top of the fascia You know what? We could probably buy some multi-purpose spray actually for this. Help us speed it along a bit. Oh yeah. Oh shit, look at it go. Thank you. 
just we'll, we'll we'll try and we'll try and do this one a bit quicker, and then we'll like power wash away what we miss, basically. Well, we'll use the jet to get rid of what we miss. Oh, I was like, why is it not going anywhere? It's because I didn't refill it. Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, that roof was holding most of the percentage of this finish there. Go. Look at this wash. Isn't it amazing? Oh my god. 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 It's so good. I'm gonna. Hope I don't blast off. He's gonna ding. I'm gonna ding. Just the top now, it looks like. I think we can probably clean that way easier with the metal. The metal stuff, too. Do we have any more metal spray? No, we don't. Do we have any left? Okay, I guess we're doing it the old-fashioned way. A good old jet wash. It's hard to get this stuff off. Definitely wish I had the spray right now. <laughs> the, the soap. That would make this way easier. I mean, yeah, the power beam would get rid of it. I don't know if it's fast. Eh, it probably is faster, actually.
We're nearly there, boys. We're nearly there. Oh, wait. Oh, no, I'm missing things. Roof trim, middle deck, rim, joists times two, upper deck, underside times two. Okay. Roof trim. Yeah, I thought that was it too. Ah, there we go. Oh. <laughs> Okay, that's that. Middle deck rim joists. Middle deck rim joists? What the fuck does that mean? What the fuck is a middle deck rim joist? Ah. Very, very sneaky. Sneaky little dirt. Oops. Sneaky little dirt hiding away. Ah. Ah, okay. And the upper deck undersides. Okay, I guess I missed two undersides? The other one I'm missing. I want this thing. Hey, there we go. Oh. Oh. One upper deck underside. Hmm. Got to the old wiggle water. Uh, I don't see it up a deck on the side, not 
First time on Twitch? Really? Well, hello. I pretty random you to come into a the power wash stream, but yeah. Right. Where where the heck is this last bit? Oh my god, this is a nightmare. This is a nightmare. Why does it still say deck, upper side, not done? Treehouse looks mighty fine. You spruce the spruce. How's it going to Why does it still say it's not done? I don't like that. Now, can you show me what's making this crazy noise, please? Blast that goes to the moon. It's completed, okay. Good, good, good. Clean the fire helicopter. 